Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Look at this. This is a Studebaker truck. I've been hoping it would be a little bit more advanced than what it is now. This is what we did last summer with Peter from Chicago. Peter came over. He wanted to learn at my class how to do the drawing. We had a little model. I'll show you the model in a minute. And uh, a lot of photographs. And from that model, we determined that we were going to have to make some changes, so we made the cab a little bit bigger when we did this. This is with my uh, magnetic drawing board. This is magnetic plastic strip similar to a refrigerator magnet. And this is Tyvek. And you can just move this around and move it just like you do a CAD line until you really like it. We set the wheelbase. I made the wheelbase, I think, two inches longer than the standard 37 Studebaker pickup, which I consider one of the nicest looking trucks. It has this beautiful slope back grill that follows all the way back on the cowl. So Peter was really happy. He took, uh, I think, a 130-hour class, and we were able to get this drawing all done. And then Peter made this wire form, and this was the first wire form that Peter had made and he wants to build his own car. A lot of my students uh, see that's a really good way to go and I believe that's the best way to go. A lot of people are a little intimidated in building their own car. Uh, it's actually inexpensive. You can build your own car oftentimes a lot cheaper than you can restore a car depending of course on the car. But uh, when you're building your own car, you can shoot for the moon. You can make anything you want. You can make a Rolls Royce or a Duesenberg or a Bentley or a Ferrari or a Studebaker, whatever you want. And uh, from that wire form that Peter made, I just had 230 hours students and Larry and Travis. And Travis had zero, I mean zero experience. He'd never put a piece of metal in an English wheel at all. And I showed him how to do what he needed to do. And Larry had about maybe five or six hours, he said, total in wheeling. And he had only made these little pots before. So this was their first attempt at making an entire fender off of this wire form. And they did a beautiful job. The wells on the back side look nice, all flanged. This is going to be a wide edge here. This is 060 aluminum. There's a few minor flaws. There's a little overdevelopment right here. I'll be able to heat that and then slap that right down, no problem. I'm not going to do that yet. And then we made a flexible shape pattern off of this. And Larry started making the other side, which would be, this is the left side fender, and then this would be the right side fender. So we have to, the, Travis made some of the gauges with the flexible shape pad and the gauges. You don't need a buck for the other side. We'll just use those gauges and flexible shape pad to make the three pieces. It's one piece here, one piece here, and one piece here. It was all shrunk using my gathering tool and the shrinking facilitator and then uh, hammered out in the center a little bit so a combination of shrinking and stretching then they said well we only got a couple more days left here so I'd, they both wanted to try wire form and so I says well we got to wire form the cab the cab is the essential element on this uh, we have the wire form for the rear fender I have an original fender that's all rusty but the shape is all great and we started making uh, flexible shape patterns and, and gauges off of that and those will be made uh, all from the flexible shape pattern gauges, the front fenders. And the hoods are basically pretty flat. Uh, we'll, we'll make some kind of wire form buck for the top part of the hood, but the sides are all, all flat. The grill is a different deal altogether and the bed is all flat stuff so that's pretty easy so the the most difficult part of building this whole uh, truck is to build this cab section first and the cab section the original dimensions uh, if you go by them your shoulder is going to be right up against the shoulder so uh, we, we sat down in chairs and we measured our outside shoulder dimensions two side by side, it was, I think it was Larry and myself sat side by side, and it was 53 inches. 
So then we figured about two inches for the thickness of the doors, so it's a 56 inch total width. So they wanted to do the wire form, and that's already somewhat in here as far as the length. We expanded the length here, but we needed to figure the length for the width. So Larry and Travis, first wire form attempt, they made this nice cab enclosure here. It's not anywhere near finished. They mi it might have to be adjusted a little bit, but um, it's a really good start. And like I said, this was their first time they had ever wire formed. So I told them, let's make a box structure inside so you can attach all the wires to. And I had some of this, uh, I think it's 16 gauge bent up stock here and uh, they MIG welded a nice little box in the middle with inside the confines of the outside of the body and Larry was proficient in uh, Fusion 360 the free uh, software program that you can get online from AutoCAD and uh, using the side view drawings I had here and, and coupled with the model so here's the little model and uh, Larry took this model and took photographs from the top view, the rear view, the front view and we had the side view already which is a modified version of this like I said we expanded it a little bit uh, and taking into consideration those modifications of enlargement uh, Larry took the drawings in th Fusion 360 and there's an outlining tool and from that he created DXF files and this isn't the way I do it but Larry was comfortable with that method and I have a CNC uh, wood router with a pen in it. It's a 4 by 8 wood router so we took that those DXF files loaded them onto that uh, wood router and was able to draw the drawings out full scale which then they bent the wires and they, they factored all the measurements from Larry's drawings of where the wire spacing was going to be. Now this wasn't exactly the way I would do it. When I do it, I do it just on the magnetic board, which is very simple to do. Uh, but Larry felt comfortable doing it that way, so I said, okay, go with it. And uh, the results are pretty good. Uh, like I said, we might have to tweak them a little bit. Now these are just basic, uh, what I call primary lines. Now these got to be enhanced by what we'll do is we'll take the lines I have for the door there and those will all go in here. So now the door will get defined and the windows will get defined. The windshield post needs to be defined. This might be in the way we'll lop that off if it, if it is, not a problem and uh, the back window, I'm going to put a little bit bigger back window than the standard in the, in the original 37. Uh, so all those enhancements have to be have to happen yet. Maybe some student at another class might, might want to uh, partake in learning the process and doing all that too, so that might happen that way. But overall I was pretty thrilled that they did some really good work in a short amount of time and uh, with results like that, I mean, they speak for themselves. So the Studebaker project moved forward a little bit. I just thought that uh, it would be something that uh, my YouTube audience would like to see. Uh, keep those comments coming. Please subscribe. Tell all your friends about my channel. We're growing and this is an ongoing relationship. You guys are, are going to learn a ton of stuff. We're going to keep evolving this. Thanks for watching.